Then this tutorial I'm going to be using Brian Sipes Got Flesh Prosaid Transfers. It comes with instructions on how to use it but I'll go through in this video as well. First of all you've got to remove any excess powder with isopropyl alcohol. If it is sticky at this stage you can go ahead and use it. If not add a thin layer of prosaid, stipple over the top and wait for it to dry. Once it's dry you remove it and you place it face down on some waterside paper that is provided with the prosthetic kit. You need to make sure that the shiny side is facing up. You want to apply a little bit of pressure to try and smooth out all of the edges of the prosthetic onto the waterside paper, but you cannot press too hard or else you can flatten out the detail of the prosade. It's finding the right balance. Next you need to cut it out and then remove that acetate, the clear paper on top. I find that my prosade transfer will stick a little bit and this is why I use a brush with some isopropyl alcohol to carefully unstick the prosade from the acetate paper and push it back down onto the water slide paper. Um, now applying this to the skin is very much like applying a temporary tattoo. You want to put it prosthetic side down onto the skin and then using a wet cloth of some kind hold it onto the water slide paper until the water slide paper slips off after a couple of minutes. Once it's slippery and ready to come off and ready to come off, you'll see the prosthetic has mostly transferred. It does look quite flat. There are a lot of areas that haven't fully stuck down. So now we're going to go over it with some isopropyl alcohol and my Sigma brush number five is really good for this. And we're going to push all of the excess prose down to get those really defined bumps. Um, and what this step does is the is the isopropyl alcohol will kind of melt away and blend out the prose. Um, and this will leave you with really seamless edges and makes it really easy just to get a realistic looking thing. Whether it's a wound or these diseased pieces or whatever it is. Next you're going to stipple a thin layer of prose over the top and this will seal it to make it to last to make it last longer. And it will also make just everything look seamless and the edges disappear and just give it a nice kind of even coating down into the skin. Now once this is dried to clear, you're going to powder it so it's no longer sticky. Um, and I did put too much powder on this, so just pretend that didn't happen. I'm going to do the same thing um, on both of his cheeks. So I've already transferred this to the waterside paper. I'm going to hold it with a wet cloth until it's sliding off. And then I'm going to blend it out with my isopropyl alcohol to just define it and give it nice edges and everything. And then once that's done, I'm going to stipple praise it over it and I'm going to powder. And I repeat this for the other cheek piece as well. Now I'm going to use an airbrush just because it's a lot quicker and it gives a really even coverage of the skin just to white out and deaden the skin so he looks really just sick and not well with no blood in his face. I'm going to use a mix of colours from the Skin Illustrated Necromania palette. Um, I believe I'm starting with Ghastly and Dead Flesh and then I also move on to Bone and you can see the bone kind of brings in a bit of warmth into the face um, and just kind of breaks up the colour a little bit. And once I've gone over a couple of layers of that I'm going to go in with my number five little stipple brush from Sigma again and the grey matte colour. I'm going to stipple this around the wounds and also over other places of the face just to break up the colour and um, just to break up the colour a little bit. Now I'm going to go in with this vile bile colour. I'm going to put that around the raised bumpy area to make it look really, really gross. Then I'm going to go in with Darth Moss and my number nine veining brush. I'm going to first of all put this colour around each of the bumps just to really define it and then going in with the number 7 brush and also the number 5 brush just to blend out um, that colour and if you feel like you put too much colour down you can also use a cotton tip with isopropyl alcohol just to reabsorb some of that colour. And then I also put some dribbles down, I don't think I ended up liking the dribbles that much and I took away a lot of the dribbles with some um, tissue and some isopropyl alcohol and cotton tips and everything but for now they're there, that's what that is. And they continue going around and defining all the bumps across the face and then blending it out. Um, I'm also using the smaller veining brush here for the smaller bumps. Next I'm going to stipple some of this colour around with the brush number 5 and that's just to make it all look connected on the face. And then I'm going to go in with lividity and lividity on the number 
nine veining brush. I'm going to do thicker veins up the neck and then I'm going to do smaller capillaries and branches off these main veins. And I'm going to stick mostly to the side of the face and kind of bring it in towards the center of the face. We were playing Childish Cambino, I don't know if you can tell. I'm also going to extend these little veins and capillaries through the wound. Next we're going to go back in with number 7 brush again and some isopropyl alcohol just to really soften those veins and capillaries and make them look more underneath the skin. Next I'm going in with some ultra blue mixed in with vein blue and I'm going to do a couple more capillaries and veins um, in this other colour just to break up the just to break up the colours and give it a little bit of difference. Um, and I don't do nearly as many of these, just a couple. Next I'm going to use my Ben Nye Ultimate FX Cream colour palette. I'm going to use this darker purple around Daniel's eyes just because the alcohol activated colours are not very pleasant around people's eyes, I would not recommend that. So I'm going to put it underneath on the bottom eyelid and on the top eyelid as well and just kind of blend it out so he looks quite sickly. Um, and I don't blend it out super well, there are different splotches of colour around the eye and I think that kind of adds to the effect. I'm also going to apply the same colour around the nostrils to make them look really raw and sick um, and also around the mouth. Next I'm going to add some of this colouring and also a little bit of a lighter pink colouring on the bubbled up soles just to make them look a bit sore. And this is where we're up to now. That's the end of the paint job. And this is Daniel doing his best infected impression. <laughs> and we're going to put some mouth blood in just to make his mouth look really dark and disgusting. This is a Thomas Serpinant mouth blood. <laughs> And you can finish your look here if you want. We also decided to play around with the Krylon Black Eye Blood. Um, although this effect does only last about a minute, it looks really cool in short sections of video or in photographs. But in person, the effect does not last very long. Um, and you would end up just having these black tears but nothing in your eyes. And if you'd like to see <laughs> how it went the very first time we tried it, um, which went way, which, which didn't go anywhere near as well as this attempt, um, I, will, I will link our impressions of the black eye blood at the end of this video and you can laugh at me accidentally turning my brother into a really sad emo kid. And you can see what it looks like when it just gets all over the eyelids and just gets really messy. So I decided to put a second amount in just to see if it would make the eyes a little bit darker, but I think it... Mm, but I think this mostly just ended up giving him more tears coming down his face. quickly show you how we remove it. I use the gel shaving cream, usually the blue gels are pretty good just to remove most of the colouring as it just tends to break through the alcohol activated pigments quite well. And we get a warm washcloth and just kind of scrub away all of those colours on my brother's face. Then I'm going to use a makeup remover. I know that DC245 liquid is often recommended as it tends to get more underneath the prose transfer and help to lift it rather than dissolving it into like a goopy mess. So I did start with this and then once I got the bulk of the prose transfers off I moved on to my personal favourite, Telesis Super Solve, just to dissolve any of the leftover glue on the skin and to help leave his skin <laughs> and to help leave his skin back in a more normal state. Hope that you guys enjoyed watching this. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you want to be friends on Facebook or Instagram, I'll link those pages in the description box. Alright, take care guys. Bye.